Hello internet and welcome to CodeBig. In this video, we will be going through what are the different types in TypeScript. I hope I got you excited, so let's get started. Welcome back guys. This video is built up on my previous video, what is TypeScript? You can take a look at that if you're not sure what is TypeScript or should you be learning it in the first place. If you're still with me, then without wasting any time, let's jump and learn what are the different types that TypeScript offers us out of the box. To follow along, you can click on the REPL link in the description below or you can just sit back and enjoy as I take you through the different types in TypeScript. Just make sure to keep a mental note of the different types or write it down somewhere because I will be explaining all the basic types that are in TypeScript and how to use them as well. So you can get started on your next project easily and quickly. So, at first, we will look into what are primitive types in TypeScript. If you don't already know, all programming languages offer primitive types which are the basic building blocks of those languages. To generalize, we can think of primitive types as the most basic building block that do not have any properties. Here are the basic building blocks of TypeScript, like string, which represent the sequence of Unicode characters, for example, code big. Numbers, which represent both integers and floating point values like the year 2020 or the value of pi, which is 3.14. Next up, we have booleans, which represent logical true or false. Next, we have undefined, which represent a value that hasn't been initialized yet. If that sounds crazy, don't worry. Just trust me, it will all make sense by the end of this video. Finally, we have null, which represents no value. Not bad, right? If you kind of understood that or if it didn't make sense at all, don't worry. We will go through some live examples where it will all make sense. So you might be wondering, this sounds great, but why do we need this in the first place? So to demonstrate this, let me go to the REPL for JavaScript. If I code this example out in the current REPL, which is for TypeScript, it will error out. And for the purpose of this demo, we will use JavaScript. Now, let us assume you're working on the next greatest web app and you need to greet your users with the message welcome every time they log in. And it's simple, right? You create a variable called greet, which you set to a value of welcome. Next, let us assume you write a complex logic up until line 41 and now you accidentally assign greet with a number, let's say 32. And you console log greet. If you hit run, you see we get value of 32 in our terminal which is absolutely correct but logically it is wrong because we were supposed to use the greet variable to greet our users instead we are overwriting the value of greet with a numeric value and javascript didn't even complain this is because types for javascript variables are determined at runtime and types for javascript can also change at runtime this is what exactly happened in our example to overcome this very scenario, TypeScript offers us type annotation. Type annotation let us declare the same variable but with a specific type when we are writing out our variables. This allows the TypeScript compiler to check the code and see if it follows the type that we have already specified before the code executes at runtime. This in short allows us to catch any bugs before we have even run our program and see an error in our terminal and it also prevent any logical errors. Now, if I switch back to my TypeScript editor, I will create a new variable called greet using the let keyword, but this time around, I will add a colon and say it is of the type string and assign a value of welcome. Now, let us assume we write some complex logic and we are on line 41 again. Now, we will try to assign a value of 32 to greet. And as soon as I do that, you see, that my compiler is highlighting greet in a red telling something is off. If I hover over it, I get to know exactly what is wrong. It say type 32 is not assignable to a type string. If we think about this for a second, it does make sense, right? Because we are trying to assign a numerical value to a variable which is already assigned a string value. This is much more helpful during the time of development as you caught the error while you're coding. And now you know that you are trying to assign a numeric value to a string. To overcome this, we can say let random number of type number be set to the value 32 
and when we console log it this time around we see we get both welcome and 32 next we will look at what is type inference looking at this example we just got to know how valuable type annotation is but one drawback is they require a lot of extra typing luckily TypeScript's powerful type inference system means that we don't have to use type annotation all the time. But one restriction to type inference is that it can be used only when a value of a variable is assigned immediately. Let me real quick create a variable called flag and assign it to a boolean value of false. And if I hover over the variable name, it automatically infers the type for us and tells it is of the type boolean. Now, if I do something stupid, like try to assign the value of a flag to a string code big, you see that the value of the flag is immediately highlighted and just like magic it tells type code big is not assignable to type boolean. How cool is that? Now in real world, when you work on live projects, it is not always true that we will be always assigning values directly when we create them. At that time, can you guess what will be the type of the variable? Let me just clear out everything except let flag. Now you see I have only declared the variable. If I hover over the variable flag, you see we have something of type any. All that is happening is TypeScript compiler gives a variable with no type annotation and no immediately assigned value the type any. Just a quick note, the type any is specific to TypeScript only and it does not exist in JavaScript. The most important thing is, if you annotate a variable with the type any, then TypeScript will not infer or annotate that variable. And just like that in JavaScript, its value can change over time. Just try to avoid using any type as much as possible. And there will be scenarios where you would not know what type of data you would be coming back. In that cases, it's fine to use any, but try avoiding it as much as possible. Next, we will look into void. Void is another TypeScript type that does not exist in JavaScript. In simple terms, you would use void to represent a non-returning function. In the real world, you would be using this quite a lot because if you have programmed before in React, you would know most of the time after performing some complex logic in our function, instead of returning the value, we would just set the state. In this case, we would tell the function to return void. A simpler example would be, I write a function called long text which takes a text as a string as its only parameter and returns void as the only thing from the function and all that does is console log the value of text. The next thing we will look into is the never type. The never type represents something that would never run and even this only exists in TypeScript and not in JavaScript. In the real world you would never use this but I just want to show you that it exists. Let me create a function called forever task that takes a task name of the type string and runs an infinite loop that logs doing task name over and over again. Just think of it like this. You use never on a function that calls an infinite loop and never returns from the function. But don't confuse it with void. In case of void, you are returning from the function but not returning any value. But in case of never, you will never come out of the function at all. Just so you understand, I will add a break statement after my console log. And in the real world, it will log the value once and break out of the loop. And it's no more an infinite loop. As you can see, it says a function returning never cannot have a reachable endpoint. Great, that makes sense, right? Next, we will look into enumerations, also known as enum. Enum allows us to declare a meaningful set of friendly names that a variable can be set to. We do this by the enum keyword followed by the name we want to give the enum. So in this case we will declare an enum with the name order status. Now we can set all the possible values a order status can have like paid, shipped, completed and cancelled. The important thing to keep in mind is enum does not exist in JavaScript. I just want to show you what the enum transpiled to JavaScript looks like. In order to do that, let's just head over to the TypeScript playground. You can find the link to this in the description below. If I copy and paste the same code over to the playground, you will see the equivalent JavaScript implementation of the code. If you have to do the same thing in JavaScript, look at the amount of code we have to write to do a simple task. 
TypeScript helps us remove all the code repetition and hover it. Next, we can create a new variable called OStatus and set it to orderStatus and dot. You see, I get a nice intelligence of all the list of options available to me. How cool is that? The next thing I want to show you is, if I console log the value of OStatus, now I get the numerical value of the place where it is present in the enum. If I run this code, you see we get 1 at the output, as shift is at the position 1 and counting inside enum starts from 0. The best thing about using enum is it can declaratively set the value of the position of a value inside the enum. What I mean is, I could do something like this. I can set the position of the first value to be 3 for example, and I run this. You see the value of the O status was updated from 1 to 4. Now that's cool. Let's look at the next type, object. The type object is shared with JavaScript and represents a non-primitive type. So we all know how objects work. Let me create a new variable called customer, set to an object which has the following properties like name which is set to BBN Corporation and active prop which is set to true. When we create an object in TypeScript and declare the properties of those objects, TypeScript automatically infers their type as well. We could access the following properties of an object using the dot notation as you already know. But the thing where TypeScript comes in is if we assign a wrong type to the property of an object. What I mean is, let me just do customer.name and assign it to a numerical value of 32. Once I do that, you see I get an error telling that type 32 is not assignable to a type string. Finally, we will look into arrays in TypeScript. Just like object, array are structure that TypeScript inherits from JavaScript. So let me just real quick create a variable called numbers and assign an empty array to it. Now, if I hover over the variable numbers, it says it's of a type any followed by a pair of brackets. What it means is our array can contain any values. Just go back and take a look at any type if you're not sure what it means. Since we have created a variable called numbers, let's just add some numbers into it like 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now if I hover over the variable number, it says it's of a type number followed by a pair of brackets. This is exactly how you would type annotate an array in TypeScript. First you tell what is the type that our array contains. In this case, we have numbers, so we add a colon and tell number, then we tell our array contains numbers, so we add our brackets to depict our array. Simple right? The best thing about TypeScript is its inference feature. If we loop over the array using a for each loop, so I could do something in lines of numbers dot for each and within the for each I write an arrow function that takes number and just locks the number. If I hover over the number, it says it is of the type number. How cool is that? The one important thing I have learned is never to trust TypeScript's type inference blindly. As your app grows in size and you start adding different packages and write complex logic, TypeScript kind of could start inferring type incorrectly or it may just default it to the type any, where we are not doing any checks whatsoever. This does not happen on a regular basis, but we often stumble upon this situation. A good rule of thumb would be to always check the type by just hovering over the variable just to make sure it has been inferred correctly. With that said, we have reached the end of the video guys. Congratulations if you made it this far, because you have successfully understood the basic types to get started using TypeScript on your next project. We still have to look at some of the advanced types offered by TypeScript and that's for another video. If you want to stay updated, consider subscribing. See you in the next video. Happy coding until then.